Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Neka and I'm Polly and you tuned in because you made a conscious decision that you want to live more daring. Today we're gonna to talk about the number one thing that keeps us from living a daring life. What does living daringly mean? It means that you have complete agency over your life. You are not allowing yourself to be crippled by fear, by uncertainty, and by judgment. You are going after your dreams, you're going after your goals. And as easy as that might sound for some, for others, it's not that easy. Because there's this one thing, there's this one thing that keeps us from truly living a daring life. And you know what that one thing is? It's vulnerability. The funny thing about vulnerability is that everybody struggles with it. I struggle with it, I'm sure some of y'all struggle with it, and it's something that people don't like to talk about. We do not like to talk about vulnerability because we associate vulnerability with weakness. And that is the one thing that I would like to debunk is that vulnerability and weakness are not synonymous for one another. I think that people who have the ability to truly be vulnerable and show themselves for who they truly are are some of the strongest people that I have ever met. Vulnerability can be something that is extremely limiting in our lives because it does not allow us to venture outside of the norm. It keeps us on this straight and narrow path because this is what has been the most comfortable for us and it's what we have found the most success in doing. A lot of what we'll be discussing today is going to be based off of this book, Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. She is absolutely one of my favorite authors. I've read this book and I've also read her book Rising Strong as well as watching a lot of her TED Talks. Um, Brene Brown is a researcher who's dedicated majority of her work to researching vulnerability and shame and the impact that it has in our lives. So while reading this book, I found that the reason that I struggled a lot um, growing up in high school into my college years as well is that I really struggled with allowing myself to be vulnerable with other people. I have my inner circles, people that I trust, my family, my close friends, who I was completely willing and open to taking on these vulnerable spaces with. But when it came to the, when it came to society and people that I hadn't necessarily um, been as immersed with and I hadn't gotten used to, the ability for me to truly just bear it all was something that took me a little bit longer to do. Why is vulnerability important and how can it be impactful in our lives? And when I first thought of that question, I wanted to rephrase it. So instead of saying why is vulnerability imp important, I'd rather like to phrase that question with what do you think your purpose in life is? It's not a rhetorical question. Go ahead and think about it. If you have a pen and paper next to you, just write it down. I don't have a pen or else I would write it down. Some of you may have said that your purpose is medicine. Others might say that your purpose is giving back to people who come from underprivileged backgrounds. While some of you may say that you're going to use your natural talents, your God-given ability, whether that be sports, um, arts and crafts, music, regardless of what you wrote and in what fashion you wrote it, it requires that we connect with other people. And something that I've gotten from Daring Greatly is that we as human beings are all hardwired for connection. That's our purpose in life. Our purpose is to be able to connect with other people. So let's take it to a biblical stand. As disciples and as followers of Christ, my job is to be a servant. My job is to also spread the word of God. And what does that require? That requires us to be able to connect. And if everything that we believe in comes back to the Word of God, then there's no way to denounce that our purpose in life is to make these connections. So where does vulnerability play into this? When I thought about it, I mapped it out as such. If this is our purpose and this is vulnerability, what is the meeting ground in the middle? The meeting ground in the middle is people. It's connection. In order to reach our purpose in life, we need to be able to establish and make genuine connections. And in order to make these connections, we have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable because people are not gonna buy into and invest in people that they do not feel have been truly genuine and authentic with them. There was a quote that I read in her book that really stuck out to me and it said that 
Vulnerability is the first thing that we seek in others, but it's the last thing that we're willing to share and show other people. And it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work if we're not able to reciprocate that sense of vulnerability without harboring the shame, then we lack those genuine connections. When it comes to vulnerability, you want to understand your boundaries. Don't share personal stories with the intent of being vulnerable until you've navigated through them with people in your inner circle. So what do I mean by your inner circle? My inner circle or my circle of trust consists of people that have shown me that they have the ability to be loyal to me and because of that I trust them, they trust me, and they provide a sacred space that is judgment free. I found that over time I built up what Brene Brown references as vulnerability armor. And what that basically means is that I built up this wall, built up this wall that does not allow other people in because I'm constantly, um, I'm constantly putting up a defensive mechanism that pushes people away. Perfectionism was very much so a defensive mechanism for me. I felt that if I looked perfect, if I acted perfectly, then I would minimize the level of judgment that I would receive. We live in a society that is so driven by the validation of Earth others. And I felt good whenever I got recognition for something that I had worked really hard on. But where it becomes a negative and unhealthy is whenever we're constantly seeking out that validation. Let go of perfectionism and allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow yourself to venture outside of your norm. Allow yourself to truly grow into the person that you were destined to be. Give yourself a break. Appreciate what you bring to the table. Know that you are unique and you are the only person in the world capable of doing what you are capable of doing. Know that God gifted you with talents. He gifted you with a mind. He gifted you with purpose. Purpose. God has given you the purpose and he will provide you the tools to get to your destination. We've been talking a little bit about shame. So what does shame mean in the sense of vulnerability? So Brene Brown defines shame as something we've done, haven't done, failed at doing, that deems us unworthy of connection. So like I said previously, we as humans are hardwired for connection. We're here to make connections with other people. So if shame deems us unworthy, then it's right here. It's on this side of the spectrum of vulnerability. And this is our purpose. So we have vulnerability and shame here, and we have our purpose here. And the shame that I felt was a result of that last part, being deemed unworthy of connection. So I'm the type of person that I'm an extreme perfectionist. And it got to the point to where I attributed my self-worth to my ability to achieve. If I got good grades on tests, then I had high levels of self-worth. If I performed well in a game, levels of self-worth are constantly rising. But the moment that I started getting bad grades, or the moment I started performing bad in games, my self-worth deteriorated as a result of that. And it's so dangerous when we tie our self-worth to our ability to achieve. As a result of me tying my self-worth to my achievement, I had all this shame built up in me for whenever I failed to be perfect that it took away from my want to be vulnerable. It took away from me wanting to go outside of my comfort zone because I had gotten so comfortable in doing the things that were in my box because I knew I could excel at them. You're not allowing yourself to step out of your comfort zone and lean into discomfort, then you're never gonna achieve your potential. You're so stricken by the thought of failing at something. We allow fear to cripple us from taking that next step because we were afraid of failure. We've already failed. In that moment, we have already failed. Right now, I'm currently sitting in our student lounge and I am talking to a camera. People are constantly walking in and out and I can see them, they can see me. I'm sure I look very silly to them talking to this camera about vulnerability. If I'm not taking the actions to doing what I'm expecting y'all to do, then that defeats the purpose of what we're doing here, right? So I'm gonna live a daring life and I'm gonna continue to encourage y'all to do the same thing as well. There's actually a quote that I wrote down in a sticky note and I keep it on my mirror and I look at it every morning when I wake up. I know, very Mary Jane Paul of me, which you know, one day I wish to become Mary Jane Paul. It reads, be willing to let go of who you think you should be 
to allow yourself to become who you're destined to be. And I want to wrap up this talk on shame and vulnerability by saying that this is our purpose in life. This is what God has destined you to be. This is what was written in stone before you were even born. But here is shame and vulnerability. And this is what's keeping us from reaching God's purpose. And right in the middle is our ability to connect, make those genuine connections with other people. And currently, this is where I am in life right now. I am still battling with shame, and I am still battling with vulnerability. You continue to ask yourself, what is your purpose? Where do you see yourself going in life? And how are you going to live a more daring life so that you can ultimately reach your goals and aspirations? And to all of my daring darlings, I urge you to go forth and conquer this coming week and live a daring life. I dare you. Let it go.